Hello and welcome to COP, uh, COP 4709 Applied Database 2 at uh, Daytona State College. This video will take you through um, one of the assignments that we have, basically a sample assignment of how to create an interface for uh, a database system. Um, I'm going to be doing my programming work inside of Visual Studio 2010. I'm going to write this as a web application just because that's kind of a fun way to do it. And um, I'm going to be using the CMS, the uh, Medicare Medicaid database that had the patient information into it as part of the example. The goal of what I'm going to do today is to create a form which allows the uh, user to select an individual state from the database and then see the scores of how the uh, different hospitals scored. Now, um, as a preliminary to get started here, what I did was I um, actually have a procedure here I actually have two things here, um, a few things that I'll go through. Um, the raw data, I formatted the raw data that we had for the project, um, for this project, in that I need to know the hospital name, the state. I had the three communication scores and the three doctor scores. If I do a um, view of this raw data, that information was the raw scores of how well did the nurses communicate versus you know very poorly, relatively well, or very well. And I want to develop an overall score. We looked at this in a previous assignment having a formula of how to develop that overall score. And what I did is I actually took that and I put that into a view. And I'm going to actually show this view scripting to an alter to an alter view. Um, where you can actually see the view altered. What I did is I created this view where the score for the nurse score, which is the one of the communication scores times five plus the other communication score times ten. Uh, remember the first communication score was times zero, so I didn't need to include that. And then I had the doctor score, and I threw in a couple other scores here, the health score and the pain score. If you go back to the original database, you'll see that the scores um, were, were ranked as um, there were a lot of different questions that were asked that had that different type of ranking. So if I were to look at this view, particularly look at this view, which is very useful, um, I would get the hospital name, the state, the nurse's score, the doctor's score, the health score, the pain score. So that's what I have uh, originally ahead of time um, so that we have this set out. The other thing that I did is I created a stored procedure. I can look at my stored procedures. Oops, I don't want the system stored procedures. Um, I can look at the stored procedures, and I have a stored procedure called um, score, state score. And basically, it selects from the view where a specific for a specific state. So that's what I'm starting with. I have a view and a stored procedure. The view shows the stuff that I want, the way I want to show it, and the store procedure um, selects for an individual state from that view. I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to go over to Visual Studio. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and make a web application, which I'll call CMS. For center, uh, to med, that's the Medicare, Medicaid abbreviation. Uh, example 2. I'll call this example 2. You call it whatever you want to call it. That's just what I'm calling it here. And that's going to take me to a, a layout window where I can actually make things. So um, I could use the existing home page here, but what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to go click on over here. I've got my solution explorer, which has, and, and, and if you're going to be programming in Visual Studio, it's good to learn about all the different features of Visual Studio. This is going to be about a 15 minute long video just to take you through a simple example of how to use some of the tools. I could actually run this application right now and I'd get to see the welcome page. Um, down here I have, this is the source view. I usually work in source view versus design view. This is what it looks like to the end user. Um, if I were to go up here and hit debug and start debugging, it would pull up in my browser an actual out the application itself with all the different features here. That's looking in. That's looking at it in Firefox. Um, I'm going to close that, and I'm going to go ahead and stop debugging. So I was able to actually run this application. But what I want to do is I'm going to create a new form. So I'm going to add new item. I'm going to create a web form, and I'm going to call this state 
scores. And when I do that, I get the new form, and I actually have it configured automatically to go into source mode versus design mode. There's uses to both of those, the source mode and the design mode. So right now I have my properties box over here, which shows me the properties of any individual thing on my form. I have my solution explorer over here, and I've got my actual form here where I can go back and forth between design and source, and I can even go into split mode. I don't like to work in split mode simply because it takes up all my screen real estate. Now, I'm going to go to my toolbox, and uh, if you don't see the toolbox, you simply go up to view. Okay, toolbox is on here, and it will put toolbox over here on your bar that makes it useful to you. And I'm going to do a couple things here. I'm going to add two SQL data sources, and I'll show you why I'm going to add two SQL data sources. Part of it's for simplicity, and I want to take this SQL data source, and I want to stick it, I'm going to have it inside my form, right here. And then um, my design is very, very simple. I'm going to have a drop-down list. You might know them as combo boxes or drop-down lists. I'm going to have a drop-down list, and that's where I'm going to stick all the states. And then I'm going to have a grid view, and that's where I'm going to show my results. Now, this is this may seem like very simple programming when I get done with this because a lot of the stuff that you do here is very very automated. Okay, so there's my grid view. Um, I have I like to call my drop-down lists DDL, and this is going to be DDL states, because I'm going to select the states, and I'm going to call this grid view. I like to use GV for grid view, grid view, and I'm going to say results. There we go. Now, I haven't done really anything to attach any information to this, but if I went over here and looked at the form, I would see that I have the two data sources. I have an unbound, and I think what I'll do here is between my drop-down list I'll put a little line break in there. Now I can put labels and other things in here, but this is the basics right now. So now let's go up to the design view, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to configure this data source. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this data source, and I'm going to connect it to the database, and then I'm going to link it up with this, this drop-down. And what I want to do is I want to show the states in the drop-down. So first thing I've got to do is I've got to configure it. I'm going to go ahead and create a new connection. New connection will actually hook up to the database that has my Medicare Medicaid database, and you should be keeping track of where your databases are. Um, <clears throat> it often takes a second for this to come up, and the reason it takes a second for this to come up is I actually have connections to lots of databases. Uh, I have my one that I want here in this database, and I want to go to the patient survey. So there it is. That well, let me see the connection string. That's what the system uses to store this. Um, it's going to ask me if I want to save this as patient survey connection string. Yes, I do. Now, when I got to here, it's like, okay, well, I've got this ability to configure statements for doing this. I'm going to actually specify a custom SQL to do this. And the custom SQL statement is going to be select distinct and I usually write, when I write the commands, I will put the uh, stuff that's SQL in caps and the stuff that's not um, in, lower, in lowercase or actually the way it is in the database. So state is, a, is actually a column in the raw data. So I'm going to select that from raw data. Now, if I wanted to know if that works, that, that statement here, I can go over here to my database where I have this and I can say use and this database is called patient survey and then I can look at what happens if I do this and that gives me a list of a distinct list of the states which is what I want. So I'm going to go next. I can test it. And there's my there's the same thing I just saw. So that I want to put onto my combo box. Now how do I do that? Well, if I go to the combo box, it, which is unbound, I can now select this and I can choose the data source. 
if I select the data source, SQL data source one, okay, it's only got one field. I'm going to display that field, and the data that's going to be returned will be the same thing. So what this allows you to do is to show one thing in the actual box, but the return value when a user selects something will be something else. So I'll click OK there. So now I've actually bound that to some data from the data source one. All right, well, what do I want to do next? Well, I'm going to go to the second data source that I have here, because I'm going to connect that to the data grid. I'm going to, con I'm going to connect, connect it, and I've actually already got a connection stream made, so I'll just use that connection stream. Okay, again, I want to do custom here, and in this case, I'm going to use a stored procedure. Well, I've got one stored procedure. If you had multiple stored procedures, you'd see those there. But I'm going to use that stored procedure. Okay, now, I'm going to use the value state that stored procedure actually takes one parameter, which is the state. I have to tell where's that state coming from. So the source of this parameter that's going to be passed to the data to the uh, SQL data source has to come from somewhere. It can come from a cookie, a control, a form. It can come from all over. Well, in this case, I'm going to bring it. I'm going to take it from a control, and the control I'm going to bring it from is the drop-down list that had the states. Okay, no, no uh, source value here. I don't need to do that just yet because I have the default value. I can just pull it from that combo box. Okay, no real need to test the query here. Okay, I'd have to actually put something in there. I'm just going to cancel. I'm going to hit finish. I'm going to hit finish. Okay, there it goes. Not responding. Sometimes it gets stuck. Okay, there it goes. So now I've actually created this data source. Now I need to now, it, now that won't do anything, it won't display anything, but if I now take this and I go ahead and attach the data, just the data source two, notice it pulled up all that information that was there, and so it's connected to that data source. Now I can make it look pretty, okay? So in other words, I can go to a formatting and I can pick, let's see, the classic format, which looks very beautiful for hospital scores, and now it looks really good. I could also go in here and play around with this. I can um, you know, make it look pretty, whatever I want to do. Um, that's now done. Now, if I let's, let's take this and let's go ahead and run it. So I'm going to go over here. It's coming up in my browser and look at that there's Arkansas there's now notice something when I change the state nothing happens it's still Arkansas so the first state did actually pull up and I got data but it didn't do what I wanted it to do as far as bringing up other stuff so let's go back over here let's uh, stop the debugging so we can do a little bit more programming here what I want to do but it isn't doing here is when I actually select this drop down list I want it to post back. That is a property called auto post back. If I set that to true, which by the way is also here, enable auto post back, it will actually cause the form to reload with the new value that's in it. Okay, I could also do this by tossing a button onto the screen and causing it to post back. Okay, but that's not what I want to do here. I want this to do automatically when I drop this, when I select something, I want that grid view to update. Well, now let's see what happens. Let's start debugging. Okay, let's bring this over here and take a look at it. Okay, Arkansas. There we go. There's my values. Okay. Now, what would I do if I wanted to show, like in the assignment, I had you show the averages? Well, that's a modification to the query. If you make the modification to the query or make a stored procedure, you've now seen how to connect a stored procedure the values that come back from a stored procedure to something. We saw how to actually use a drop-down list. So here's a few things that can get you started. And you haven't written a single line of code yet. Okay, you've actually done all this automatically. So um, pretty neat little capability here. I was going to show you this to kind of get you guys up and running and started. You're going to spend a little bit of time playing with this, but some basics of the tool. Uh, I'm going to also turn off the debugging so that you can go back into programming mode. Some pretty basic, straightforward stuff. I'm going to run back over here to the source window 
and show that if you look in the source window, it has, at, remember we only had a little bit of code in the source window. Well, now all that information, the connection string, connections, the uh, where it's getting stuff from, the commands, that's all now showing up here. And you can actually see in the ASP.NET source where it's getting. This is all, by the way, this bound fields and row styles. That was all auto-generated um, from the things that I selected. If you wanted to see the code that went with this. There's no actual code involved with this because everything here is automated, but you can actually, I usually write a lot of code when I do programming. The code behind, which in Visual Studio, you have the automated code, which is the display stuff, and you also have the ability to write code that is based on triggered events behind the scenes. That is all written in here. So I actually can see here, here's my state score form and the code that goes behind this. There's a lot to learning Visual Studio. If you want to learn a lot more about using Visual Studio, you can take COP4834. We go way deep into how to do all the stuff here. But this is simply how do you connect a database stuff to an interface. And that's what you're doing for the assignment here. Very useful to know how to use the tools. And um, good luck and some happy programming.